Welcome back to the Travel Mug Podcast. Spring has sprung. Well, technically, yeah, it's cold here today. So, cold, but like we're recording and it's light outside. So. I know the sun is like <laughs> shining behind us. If you're not watching this on video, go to YouTube and watch this. Yeah. It's glorious. It's yeah. glorious. And we're so, we are getting excited because we've had a a little bit of warm weather just to tease us, but it's getting us ready for what is to come. And we've already done like. What is it now like fall and winter in nova scotia Mm -hmm. so obviously want to talk about spring in nova scotia it's a really great time so jen what's your favorite part about spring um that it leads to summer (laughs) i love that part i love it it's it's really good winter is ending Uh, (laughs) um i i do like seeing everything kind of come alive again and the leaves come back on the trees and last year it was really exciting because it was our first couple of months in our new house so we were seeing like what plants we had come up and that was really exciting and so yeah it is it is nice to see everything kind of come back to life again (laughs) yeah definitely like I'm the same and for me it's kind of like what's ahead I want I want summer to come so badly but also it goes by so quickly so spring is sort of like a, a forefront to the future or something and I I really like seeing the weather gradually change and the buds come on the trees and a little bit more sun it is like you're watching things come alive it's actually if you take a moment to think about it it's a really really cool time of year like fall is beautiful but everything's dying yeah <laughs> Like it's lovely, but spring is sort of when it comes back to life. And I I really love that. So I guess what we wanted to do today is talk about obviously things to do in Nova Scotia during the spring. So what do you got up first? The first is garden centers, which goes right into things coming alive again. I have a new love of plants, which I think a lot of people do now with the pandemic and everybody's got house plants everywhere yes, and so yes. it's very fun and I, I've always loved visiting garden centers and even just walking through them if I wasn't buying anything and there's so many amazing ones around so I'm just gonna throw out a few of my favorites so Cosme's Garden Center here in Liverpool we've talked about it before they have really nice walking trails up and behind it as well and it's a really good place to go and take a coffee and just kind of wander around I also love Ocean View Garden Center which is in Chester it's huge. Village Nursery in Pleasantville, a little off the beaten path, but really nice. And Spencer's Garden Center in Shelburne. There's so many that I haven't been to. So don't don't come at me if I didn't talk about your favorite garden center. <laughs> they can't, it, it's our podcast. They can't come at you. Plant, plant people be crazy, you know? <laughs> Maybe they could just make suggestions then of places we should go. Yeah. That would be lovely we would love to hear that so I think I'm going to talk about something that I don't know if you know about but I guess we're going to find out is Kepoch Mountain so it's K-E-P-P-O-C-H for the listeners at home who are like what What? (laughs) I know it is on the Northumberland shore near Annie Ganesh so it used to be an alpine ski hill and it's now like a four seasons recreational area so the big draw is something likely you or I aren't going to do which is mountain biking trails right But it does have more to offer, which includes like hiking, swimming, sport fishing, boulder climbing uh, park, and also like an 18 hole like disc golf. Oh, what you call that a course. Yes, there we go. And that's just to name a few things like it hosts also events throughout the year, including like family fun days. And during those, there are trail fees that are waived. They have family oriented events. Um, They do runs and races and hiking events and educational seminars. I mean, I'm going to be super honest. What the hell? Like, no, I had no idea this existed until we were doing research for the show. Like, what? How has this place existed? We have no idea. I know. And I've literally never even heard the name before. You'd at least, you'd at least think, oh, that place I've heard of it, but I don't know what it is. Yeah, no. No, they're keeping like a best kept secret there. I think like, I don't know what's going on, but it sounds fun. Anyway, let's all head to Kepok Mountain this spring. (laughs) Anyhow. All right. Well, maybe something that we've heard of is is what's up next. Yeah. So Apple Blossom Festival, it's back, baby. Love it. May 25th to 30th, 2022. It's like, well, Phil, Kent, Phil, all the apple blossoms are out. It's all beautiful. They also have events, concerts, parade, fireworks, all those fun things. Yeah, it has a special place in my heart. We got engaged on Apple Blossom Weekend 
in Wolf hmm. Bell in 25 no 20 14 2014 and you don't remember I know I'm like well I got married in 2015 so it was 2014 <laughs> but anyway oh, that, was a, that was a whirlwind engagement jeez Louise but yeah like we went to a concert Acadia at the university and what did we see Joel Plaskett and David Miles and it was really nice. really good so yes I'm excited that festivals are coming back <laughs> I know I know I've got a, we got a couple more to talk about it's really exciting and really well, Phil is beautiful no matter the time of year, maybe not in the depths of winter, but otherwise it's a beautiful place. And especially during apple blossom season. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Something else I want to talk about that I think I'm sure is fun, but I've never had the chance to do. And it like it every, anyway, let's just talk about it. I can't <laughs> even. Um, and that is Valley Drive-In. So it's located in Cambridge, which is in Kings County. It's a 1950s style drive-in. It is seasonal, so catch your shows on the weekends between May and September. They are reopening for the season. Like, even just saying that brings me such joy. For 2022, and they open on April 29th, so it's all very exciting. It's 28 bucks per car load of people. I guess it's probably easier to sneak in snacks when you're in your own car, but I'm sure they also probably sell things there, which is how they make some money. And then it's a double feature. I mean, it sounds like fun to me and there's a I want to mention too there's also a a drive-in on the Glace Bay Highway just outside of Sydney in Cape Breton I've never been and we drive there we don't go as much in the summer so we always drive by when the winter and I look at it longingly and I just I'm dying to do a drive-in maybe this is the year I don't know you've been yes I've been to the Valley Drive-In we went I think it was summer 2019 but it could have been summer 2020 I can't remember what is time I don't know what time is anymore but anyway we we only stayed for the first movie because here's the thing about the the drive-in it has to be dark <laughs> so right it's late probably it's late like the first movie in like june is gonna start at like 9 or 9 30 like That's it is true. late and especially if you're not staying in the area and you're driving back to like halifax it's a long drive so i would say like spring like when it opens and the first like month probably or less and then in the fall if you yeah. want to like an early movie because it's I I mean I guess if you're a night owl it maybe it's not a problem for you but like I'm usually in bed by 10 o'clock so starting a movie at (laughs) nine it's like whoa (laughs) Um, but I will say we went and we had a really really good time and the food there they have like a canteen with like you know onion rings and french fries and like that sort of Mm -hmm. delicious stuff and it was really good so yeah I'd like to make it uh, there again for another movie I'd love, I love a canteen, you know, Thanks. small town, Nova Scotia, love a canteen. <laughs> What's up next? Speaking of food or food. So Halifax burger week, um, is getting a slight rebrand and is being called the burger bash. Oh, as it should um, be. I mean, every, everybody's going to call it burger week, but it is more than a week. So I guess that's why they're changing. Well, it's a bash. <laughs> burger bash. Um, so it's a 10 day event. Restaurants in Halifax feature a burger and the proceeds or some of the proceeds go to Feed Nova Scotia. And no fear if you don't eat beef or meat. And there's a lot of restaurants that do like a chicken option or a vegetarian option. So yeah, it's It usually takes place in the spring. Last year, it was in the fall, just to mess with us, I think. (laughs) Um, But it's back in the spring. So April 28th to May 7th, eat out for a good cause. Yes. A couple of the spots in Halifax that are vegan or strictly vegetarian also take place with part in it as well. So even restaurants that don't have a feature burger that you could eat. I'm sure they'll have something else anyway. Or if you just want to do actual burger week, you can find one that way too. Yeah, there's everything's like listed on their website uh, with like menus and places that are participating and and that sort of thing. So it's really fun. My, My friend, Abby, I have to give a shout out to her. She is like burger week extraordinaire. She was, oh, the, yeah? she was the Burger Week ambassador last year and she ate <laughs> burger, like she ate like two burgers a day for like the it was nuts. Like I don't know how she ate that much. I hope Abby saw a physician after that. <laughs> Get <laughs> your cholesterol checked, Abby. <laughs> we love you, Abby. Take care. <laughs> 
what's next, Megan? Where are we doing? What are we doing next? Um, well, we are going to potentially, maybe, who knows, take a shoulder season road trip. I had to say that slowly because that's <laughs> a mouthful. So we do love a road trip. We've talked about that lots of times on the Travel Mug podcast. So we won't go too deep as we've you know covered a lot of things. But spring in Nova Scotia, like I said, the buds are bursting. Things are coming back to life. We've been cooped up like all winter or for two years at this point, really. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's been a long time. Spring is a really great time. Put on your all seasons, shed those winter tires, you know, maybe put your bikes in the trunk if that suits your fancy and hit the road. So Nova Scotia, as we know, it can be really great for day trips. So you don't need to plan a weekend away necessarily. Or there are, of course, lots of cabins, motels, hotels, B&Bs, Airbnbs. Everyone needs your business. Yep. So <laughs> if you you want to go and stay one night or two night there's lots and lots of options and yeah spring weather can definitely be unpredictable we all know that but if you kind of know it going into it you know just plan for that dress accordingly yeah. We're, it's Nova Scotia people I don't know what to tell you and we have a weekend getaway actually booked for ourselves for April down in Mill Village Ooh. um I know so we really needed something to look forward to so we're going to do a little spring road trip down that way we've never been to Mill Village before ah, so I'm excited you're going to be close to me I know maybe we can meet up for breakfast at Paul's again yes, yes I love Mill Village it is it's such a cute little place you're going well, to well I'm very excited so yeah get back out there people it's time yes yes and while you're planning a road trip maybe you want to go for a hike so why not about- Spring hiking. There are so many great hiking trails around. Obviously, we can't talk about all of them, but because we're making it into an entire episode, um, yes. <laughs> coming up, um, we're going to have Deborah Petal Hand coming back on with us as she was on previously, like a year ago. Um, but she's going to talk all about hiking. So I'm excited to do that. Looking forward to that. Yes. But yeah, for now, I'll share my favorites. I love Cape Split. I'm just outside of Wolfville. Gaff Point is down here in uh, Lunenburg County area. And then the Bluff Wilderness Trail is in Timberley and the Skyline Trail in Cape Breton. So there's so many, so many good trails, but keep in mind that you kind of need the right gear for the spring because it will definitely be muddy. There's no way it's not going to be muddy. (laughs) There still could be snow or ice. So you do have to be careful with like footwear if you have like crampons or whatever, And also on the other side of that, ticks start to come out in the spring, which is not a fun thing to think about. Are we encouraging people to hike? Are we discouraging people to (laughs) hike? What are we doing here? (laughs) Do it, but do it carefully and safely (laughs) safely and carefully. Plan ahead. Do your research, as we say. Yeah, yeah. As as we say. Are there any hikes that you've done in Nova Scotia that you can think of I've done most of the ones that you've mentioned we did Cape Split just last year and I realized I'm old and I want to do the Bluff Wilderness Trail Peter has done it and I don't know if he thinks it's too challenging but every time I bring it up he's like well we'll do it eventually and I'm like I'm I'm definitely old but I also love Skyline Trail although we also and we also did that last year too I did carry a giant stick the whole time because I was petrified but other than that, it was lovely yeah. and we got to the end and we almost got blown off the mountain, but it is, it's, it's a really easy hike yeah. um, and it's enjoyable as well. So yeah, I do, I do love a hike. It's just, I can't do as many kilometers these days. Yeah. I was gonna, one of my favorites is Duncan's Cove and I didn't put it on this list specifically because it's very rocky and there's yeah. like you're on a cliff like the whole time and if that is icy it is super dangerous so like late spring probably good like now beginning of April I wouldn't do it yeah no no for sure and there is a hike we did last year I didn't plan in advance to get the name but it's actually local in Halifax and it was lovely if I remember maybe we could add the show notes because again I'm old and I forget okay (laughs) If you want to hike, you know what you could do? You could run. You could run. Also, also a no for me. Okay, so <laughs> up next, we're going to talk about the Blue Nose Marathon. So usually, and we say usually because, you know, the last two years, yada, yada, yada. But in May of 2022, uh, the Blue Nose is back, the Blue Nose Marathon. And in that's in Halifax. It happens on Victoria Day weekend. So this year, May 20th to the 22nd. 
It is a road race through the streets of HRM or Halifax Regional Municipality because it's not just in Halifax and it's multiple lengths. You can do a 5k, 10k, half, full. So usually a kids run on the Saturday and the big event takes place on the Sunday. So the 5k and up. And it's usually a big deal with like big sponsors. It brings people from all over the world. And it also brings a lot of great revenue to the city and the province, which is awesome as well. I did run the 5K myself. I think it was like 20, 2009 or 2010. But I, like I said, I hate running. So I haven't done more than that. Peter's done the 5K, the 10K, and a couple of half marathons, I think. What about you? Yes. Yeah, so I have done, <laughs> I think, seven races when we wrote this down. I was like, I'm I'm going to go count my shirts, (laughs) but I think one of them might've been dirty. It might be eight. I don't remember, but yeah, I've done either the 5k or the 10k. I think I've done the 10k twice. And the rest of the time has been the five and my husband Ryan's done. I think all of them he's done. I think he's done the full. No, he hasn't done the full marathon. He's done the half marathon, but yeah, it's really fun. I think the 5k might be on Saturday now or the, a couple of years. Oh, is it? They moved the 5k to Saturday because there's so many people, but yeah, it's a really, really fun event. And if you've never run a race, it, the atmosphere there is it feels like, different. it's, it feels so much different than just running on your own. And it's it really, really fun. And it's a really supportive environment. And I would say, even if you're majority walking it, it's still fun. Like I've had a great time every time I've done it. Um, and I've also done the volunteer massaging there too. So oh, nice. Yeah. You were just like a blue nose marathon pro. I guess I am. I mean, yeah, I did oh, it last year. year. Last year they or not last year, the year before 2020, it was virtual. So that was the last time I did it. But right. the five virtual 5K, which was not as fun. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine it was not doing the actual event. So yeah, I'm I'm a little sad I'm not doing it this year, but maybe next year. I'm we'll just be hopeful it's there next year. Mm-hmm. And if you don't want to uh, take part in a sport, what else could we maybe do? You, you could watch sports. There's okay, always that. So we're actually really lucky in Nova Scotia. We have a lot of like amazing sports teams to watch. So. The QMJHL or the Q League, as some people call it, um, mm-hmm. the Halifax Mooseheads and the Cape Breton Eagles, who dropped the, the screaming out of their name, which I'm still yeah. thinking about. Uh, <laughs> no longer screaming. They're, they're no eagles. longer screaming. They're just eagles. And they played to the beginning of May. Uh, and then the National Lacrosse League, the Halifax Thunderbirds, play into April and then longer if they make it into the playoffs, which it's looking good. And the Halifax Hurricanes basketball team also plays into April. I will say, if you've never been to a lacrosse game, it is so much fun. It is probably the most fun I've ever had at a sports game. And I had no idea what the rules were before I went into it. I knew nothing about lacrosse. And we had the best time. We went... It's just like end of February, middle of February, 2020, before the world went crazy. And I was like, I can't wait to go to another game. And then the league shut down because that's what happened, but really fun. So even if you've never seen a lacrosse thing in your life, (laughs) it's still a blast. Well, you know, that's also much like, you know, a race environment. I also find live sports. And I think we've said this before. It's so much different when you're there. You really can get into it. Yeah. For sure. Even if you're not like a sports person or whatever, uh, it's still like a lot of fun to do, to be in that atmosphere. Definitely. Awesome. Well, everybody likes a good laugh. I mean, and if you don't, I don't, I don't know what to say. Um, <laughs> <You don't> but, <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry to hear that. So if you, if you want a good laugh upcoming, there is the Halifax Comedy Festival. Again, people, events are actually happening. It's so exciting. So this year it is over four days. So April 27th to the 30th, you'll get your chance to see like 30 comedians do their thing over the four days. So it's taking place at the Spats Theater as well as other locations, including I think the Seahorse throughout Halifax. Tickets are on sale now or when this episode comes out. Hopefully they won't be sold out. They are sold per event from what I could understand, several of which are happening obviously over that four day period. And it seemed to be around 20-ish bucks per person range. So if that interests you and, and you need to like not think about the world for a bit, go to the comedy fest, have a giggle. Uh, it sounds really fun. I haven't 
I haven't done that. I know they've done this oh. event before in Halifax, but one of those things that I was like, oh, I'll, I'll get around to doing it. And then I didn't. And then we moved out of Halifax. So everything's like a little bit more difficult now, but there's still time someday. There's still time. All right. I love me a good beach day, even mm. in the spring. You can go for a walk or some beach combing. I'm lucky where I live right now. Like we have so yes. many good beaches and I am spoiled. So I love Somerville, which is close to me. Blue Rocks Beach in Lunenburg County, Crystal Crescent Beach and Taylor's Head Beach. If you're up on that shore, I know Megan, you like to do some beach combing. Do you have any faves? I do. I love love. <laughs> really I love searching for beach glass and that can be along the shore it doesn't necessarily mm -hmm. have to be a beach but if I went beaches I mean I'd have to say like my home island beaches Cape Sable yeah. Island has gorgeous gorgeous beaches the Hawk Beach Stony Island Beach both are freezing <laughs> in terms of the water but yeah. they are like pristine beautiful if you just are looking for a beach walk and I would say also off the island there's Sand Hills Beach as well and along the along the waterfront in Picto I have to say we we scored huge, huge, huge for beach glass. So if it is of an interest for you, like Peter took some pictures and like the look on my face, it was like Christmas morning. I was like, so friggin' excited. So I would highly recommend uh, that as well, but don't take all the glass, like don't be greedy. But anyway, it's, I love looking for beach glass. So if anybody out there has any like suggestions of where I could go, do let me know. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's fun. And it's just, it's nice just to be on the water, even if it is chilly, just bundle up a little bit and it just, is. just snuggle in. Super nice. Tell us about another festival that's happening. I know. I thought you would actually find this rather interesting. I know we're all busy at this exact time that it's happening, but another one I thought what sounded fun is the East Coast Cider Festival. I was like, I know. I thought there's also a beer festival. I think that will have happened by the time this episode airs. Right. Um, right. Yeah. So I thought this could be a good replacement. It's taking place at the Halifax Marriott on the waterfront in Halifax on May 28th. It's from 1 to 9 p.m. And hey, one o'clock is five o'clock somewhere. There are about 22 different cideries or purveyors taking part from all around the province and beyond. You can buy tickets, I guess, it's sort of in chunks. So either 1 to 4 p.m. or 6 to 9 p.m. They want everyone to have supper and fill up so they don't oh, drink too much cider. <laughs> Um, and each ticket comes this year is new with a redeemable food token, which I love. We love food. So yeah, give me the food. So tickets are about $45 per person plus tax. There were early bird tickets. Those are already sold out. So if you are interested in going, I would get those quickly, but it sounds like really fun. Yeah, it does sound fun. I, I know the date is kind of not good for us, <laughs> like getting ready to go to Scotland, but Maybe, hopefully it'll be happening in 2023. I know. You can get Maybe there. we could go. It sounds like a lot of fun and I love cider. It is my favorite alcoholic drink. So yes, fun times. All right. Finally, where else could we go? Last, last thing we're talk, going to talk about is the Joggins Fossil Cliffs. So I visited this place way back when it was in grade five. And I've been mm. wanting to go back ever since. Which was, yeah, I was there not long ago. It's lovely. It's just a little, just a little while ago. Um, <laughs> maybe this is the year. I don't know. <laughs> I'll get back mm -hmm. but anyway, it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It's free to visit the fossil cliffs. There's a fee to visit the interpretive center. And then there's also like guided tours that you can have um, someone come and actually show you stuff instead of just looking at rocks and being like, what am I looking at? Right. Um, so uh, the fossil record includes species first defined at Joggins, some of which are found nowhere else on earth, which cool. that's crazy. Like that's right. really cool. And it was here that Sir Charles Lindell and Sir William Dawson, the founder of modern geology, discovered tetrapods which are amphibians and reptiles and they were entombed in upright fossil trees. Cool. I know. Like, look at us. We're on the map for like, sure. you know, modern geology. Who knew? <laughs> Who knew? But you can still find fossils, but finders are not keepers because yeah. uh, they're going to want to do research on those. So maybe you've found something that 
has not been discovered yet. That would be super maybe cool. You could be on the cusp of modern geology. Well, I mean, maybe they'll name it after you, but you still don't get to keep the fossil. <laughs> I would love that. I probably actually knew that at one point, but I forget everything because I we did actually have a uh, guided tour and I'm not really a guided tour person, but it was worth it because otherwise I would just be like, oh, it's some rocks, but he he actually really made a big difference. And so I would recommend the guided tour. Yeah, that is definitely what I would want to do when I finally get there again. <laughs> yeah, do it. Okay. All right. Well, that is it for this episode. I'm sure that we missed things because there's a lot of things going on, especially with the return, so much time. the return of the world now that we're like getting back out there and events are happening in person. So we hope that no matter where you are in the world, that nature is starting to change for the better, unless you're in the Southern hemisphere and then you're heading into winter, but sorry to hear that. Sorry details, hear that. details. Hi, Tasmania. Sorry about that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tasmania, we love you. Thanks for we do. Thanks for your support. <laughs> if you enjoyed today's episode, and how could you not? Because we are so adorable. You, um, like you can leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. You can maybe buy us a coffee. The link is in the show notes for that. And share the episode with a travel-loving pal. And we'll talk to you again soon. Bye. Bye.